Hi, I'm Garvin. This telecast is on glandular fever. So, the most causes of glandular fever are caused by the Epstein-Barr virus. If you come into close contact with infected saliva and you're not immune, which is resistant to glandular fever, the Epstein-Barr virus will infect the cells on the lining of your throat. The infection is then passed to nearby white blood cells called B lymphocytes before spreading through the lymphatic system. This is a series of glands that spread throughout your body in a similar way to blood circulation system. The glands produce many of the specialized cells that are needed by your immune system. The spleen is an organ that is located just beneath the ribs on the left side of the abdomen and it is an important part of the lymphatic system because it helps to produce the infection fighting antibodies that your immune system uses to fight infections such as glandular fever. If your spleen is infected, it will become inflamed or swollen. This occurs in around half of all cases of glandular fever. So how is glandular fever spread? It's mainly spread through saliva. So kissing, coughing, sneezing and sharing a glass or cutlery are the easiest ways to catch the virus. It is less easy to catch than the common cold virus. So glandular fever symptoms. Many people are exposed to the virus that causes glandular fever, but never develop any of the symptoms. This is especially true of children. In those who do develop glandular fever, it is usually starts like most throat infections, with a high temperature of 38 degrees or more, swollen lymph glands, and usually in the neck, sore throat, tiredness and fatigue. However, the main difference is the time frame. While as most people get over a viral sore throat in a few days, glandular fever makes most people feel unwell for two to three weeks, while the tiredness and swollen glands may last for two to three months, or even longer in certain cases. Other problems that may occur include a fine pink rash on the body, especially if antibiotics have been taken, enlargement of the spleen, which is the large organ in the upper left side of the abdomen. This usually doesn't cause symptoms, although in rare cases the spleen may rupture. A swollen and painful liver, which can lead to the skin becoming yellow through jaundice. Most people make a complete recovery from glandular fever. So when would you contact your doctor? If the symptoms are prolonged and you feel unwell or concerned, it's best to see your GP. The diagnosis of glandular fever can usually be confirmed with a blood test. So for antibiotics, your GP won't give you antibiotics. Glandular fever is caused by a virus, so antibiotics won't work. So how do you treat glandular fever? There's no cure for glandular fever. It gets better by itself. You should rest and sleep, drink plenty of fluids to avoid dehydration, and take painkillers like paracetamol or ibuprofen. And don't give aspirin to children under 16 years of age. Don't drink alcohol if you're an adult. Your liver might be weak while you have glandular fever, so it's best to avoid alcohol. So how to stop glandular fever spreading? Glandular fever is very infectious. It's spread through saliva. You're infectious for up to seven weeks before you get symptoms. And you, can, you can go back to school or work as soon as you start to feel better. So to prevent glandular fever spreading, you wash your hands regularly, wash bedding and clothes that may have saliva on them. And don't kiss others. Glandular fever is known to, as the kissing disease. And don't share cups, cutlery or towels. So if you have any question, you can contact me through the Life Pharmacist on the website. You can email me or call into Lynch's Pharmacy in Cork. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.